Hi, today I wanted to talk to you about when you should not be performing translations. So you're a translator and so translation is what you do for a living. But there's certain times when you should not be translating. Now, if someone doesn't pay you enough or if it depends on the deadline or the type of client, you know, someone you like or don't like, that's on you. You're going to have to decide and evaluate what works for you and what doesn't. But these are instances in which you should not be performing translations. So the example number one is when it's a favor for a friend. Hey, look, you know, I can't pay for it, but you think you could translate this just as a favor? Could you do this? And you should absolutely say no. You should be nice about it, but you should say no because this is your livelihood. This is your life and this is your job. It's only as serious as you take it. And if you don't take it seriously, what you do, then other people won't either. And quite frankly, your friend shouldn't be putting you in that position, right? It is what you do for a living. They shouldn't be asking you to do something for free as a favor. So, you know, just find new friends. Yeah, I don't know. The second instance is when it's for equity or partnership. You'll hear this from like small businesses, maybe some startup wants a website and pamphlet and all this material translated, but they can't afford any translators. So they'll offer you shares or partnership in their company. Here, you should just say no. Look, you're a translator, okay? You're not an expert in whatever line of business they are and you shouldn't have to depend on their business for your livelihood. You just have to depend on translation. My advice would be to say, look, I'm a translator. I don't know about your business. If you pay me, this is what I can do. Otherwise, I'm sorry. Another instance, which I really don't like, is when people say that this will lead to exposure or it's something that'll go viral. This is not true. Once again, here you should say, look, I get paid for what I do. If you pay me, I'll do it. Otherwise, I'm sorry, but I won't. The truth is if they're hiring you and they think that you're doing it for exposure to go viral, then they think that you're going to help out with the marketing too. You don't have time for that stuff. So, you know, just do it for payment. Don't do it for exposure or whatever they call it. Another example is experience. People will say, well, you should do this for your experience and you know, it'll help you to get some knowledge. You shouldn't buy this. This one thing, if you're on pros and so you start doing it so you can get a track record on pros.com or translators cafe or something like that on your terms. But if some random person says, oh, you should do this for experience, then walk away. Say, look, I get paid for what I do. You know, I'm sorry. That's how it is. Another one that I've come across often, even though it's kind of a variation of what we've already heard, is for book sales. People who write books don't want to pay for translators to translate the whole book because it's a big endeavor and it'll cost a lot. And so they'll always say, oh, you know, we'll translate it into your language. And then when books go for sale in your language, you'll get a percentage of all those sales. First of all, you're not in marketing and not in sales. They'll expect you to help out with the sales since they don't know anything about that target market, right? And they'll expect you to do a bunch of marketing for it. And you shouldn't have your livelihood depend on that. You have to say, sorry, this is my rate. That's how it goes. And last but not least is for weird companies. You'll, we're gonna run into at some point some weird companies who pay you in a weird way. Some people have competitions and bidding like where you, you translate just a sentence and someone else translated another sentence. No, just weird combinations. I've seen other ones where exactly, you, you'll bid for a section and then someone else will bid for another section and you do for this section. And I don't know how they can make the translations work together. I'd stay away from those. Now, there are a couple of these companies actually on pros and on other places. And I know some people who work with them and seem to do okay. But especially when you're starting out, just stay away until you can understand more or less how each specific one works. And that's about it in terms of translations you should not perform and when you should not be translating. If uh, I missed anything, feel free to let me know, but those are the only ones that came to mind for me. Otherwise, if you want more tips and tidbits on translation, freelancing, stuff like that, then feel free to subscribe and you'll get these automatically. If you found any of this useful and interesting, please click the like button because that helps me. And otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Sabedum.